Hey, how's it going guys? I'm Paradoxic, and welcome back to Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, episode 21 of season 2 this time, SOS Part 1 is titled, and the, the two-parter for a season finale. I like, as much as they annoy me sometimes, I enjoy two-parters for finales and stuff. I enjoy two-parters, I love, I, I as much as it annoys me, I, I, I enjoy that cliffhanger feeling, I enjoy where the story goes, how it unfolds, and you know, having that big of a story being you know compacted into two and three part and stuff i i love that i love that so yes yeah, so sos part one last time we had scars um we had gonzalez meeting with Jiang as like the official kind of representatives of shield meeting the inhumans for the first time um and she did not go easy on him she didn't go easy on him. she she killed him she straight up killed him he gave her a token of you know like nostalgic respect somewhat like the 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 like the, the necklace or the bracelet or something that you know he was going to get that the, the she wanted to give to to daisy when she was a kid um and in return she smashed open a homemade terrigen um diviner metal com combined kind of crystal thing on her desk and it released a mist uh that contained the metal in the diviner and killed him it turned into stone because he was not inhuman he was not worthy um so yeah, so she killed him and then used his gun to shoot herself twice and then stage it as like an, an, like an attack on the Inhumans and then her final words before collapsing were, this means war. So she's officially declaring war on S.H.I.E.L.D., which again surprised me because the entire episode she spent explaining explaining to Cal that she did not want a war with S.H.I.E.L.D., she didn't want a war with the humans, you know, she wouldn't be leading her people into a war. And now, now it's a case of like, oh, um, you know it's now it's war now it's war and i was wondering the entire time because because reina mentioned it reina said she had a vision of shield coming to afterlife and raining hell from the quinjets and everything on fire and, it, and that it was because and that it was because jayang talked to them so but then the but then her her proposal of, of her being the one to talk to them was what made me feel iffy about that because it's like okay shield trusts you even less than she trusts even less than they trust her so I'm not sure you doing anything would actually bring any good, and you know, like Shin Jiang saw how little trust and respect um, Cal had toward Rainer. So I don't know if this is actually a sign that you know the one time they all think that she's lying is the one time that she's true. Because I think the, the the visions she had about Daisy and Sokovia came true. Those two those two visions came true, and uh, there was another one we saw in the last episode where she was telling a guy that his son would go through the mist and he be glowing blue and it would, it would be beautiful and all that sort of stuff so we didn't see if that turned out to be true we didn't see when that transition happens or whatever but she said that one as well and up until the proposal that she had gordon himself had been praising her ability saying it was a real gift and that she'd really helped out and stuff so especially with sokovia and then afterwards um gordon comes into her room with scott with, with daisy and uh and jaying and another woman and they all order the woman to keep an eye on Raina until shield's gone so i don't know where stuff is headed from here because now she's declared war officially and again we're the the, the, the penultimate episode the penultimate the, pen, the penultimate episode of the season so i don't know if the way this goes that we're actually going to have like a shield versus inhumans kind of season for season three or what the story's going to be like but I don't know. It's, it's part one, so I assume a lot of stuff's going to go down. There's going to be need to answer. There's going to need to be answered in in the next in part two, and in season three. But yeah, I don't know. This season's been going a lot. It's, it's been a wild roller coaster. This season alone has been a, a much wilder roller coaster ride than the last one. The last one only had two different, two separate kind of somewhat interconnected plot lines, and it was a wild ride. But this one, it's so so much more has happened in season two. And I love it. I love it. I, 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 I love that the, 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 I've managed to still keep up with everything that's going on, despite it feeling like, oh, crap, a lot of stuff has happened. Um, but yeah, we had that stuff. We had Ward and Kara taking Bobby hostage. Kara pretended to be May, and she snuck aboard. She, um, I went back through editing. I, like A lot of the stuff I miss out, right? A lot of the stuff I miss out on my first viewing, I usually catch up back through editing because I have to do the volume control, and I, I, I rewatch the clips again, so... You know, do still correct me if I do get stuff wrong. Of course, you know, ex explanations and then reminders always help. Don't be afraid to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, they like just just as a you know just as a heads up. I I do often catch stuff that I missed out on the first time back through editing. So I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. So it happens. It happens. Um, and uh, I'm dumb too. So <laughs> that's not really 
much of a helping uh, thing. Um, yeah, but Warden Kara Sakara pretended to, pretend to be, pretended to be May and told Bobby that you know Coulson wanted them to scout ahead and all that sort of stuff, and then she knocked her out, and then well, no, she got knocked out, and then Bobby got icered by Ward on the, in in the distance, and then they both took her hostage, and now they're both gonna do God knows what to her. So she's in their custody. Um, we had that, and then also I think the most surprising aspect of the episode, Mac leaving Shield. So yes, I mean his 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 reasons for doing so were less surprising they they made sense because they were read that there were feelings that he'd shared multiple times before so that made more sense but the fact that he actually wanted to leave she or like not even serving under gonzalez or anything on, on, on the iliad but just leaving short as whole because colson was the one in charge um he wanted to leave so he was going to go to the iliad to pick up his things and then leave he handed in his badge and everything so mac is i don't know what his full name is mac um he he's a uh, you know, I think it, Mackenzie. I think I think I, I, I think I vaguely remember Agent Weaver calling him Mackenzie at some point. I think back when they first stormed the base and everything. I don't know. I, I vaguely remember it, but yeah, Mac is no longer a Shield agent. So that's that. So yeah, a lot of stuff has gone down. A lot of stuff. So God knows how the how how these two parts are gonna go down as well. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have from the last one. If you guys want to check out the uncut reaction, then you can do so at Patreon. Um, that'll be up there uh, soon after this episode goes up. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have from the last one. So episode 21, SOS part 1. Let's go. No, oh, the Hellfire. No, the Hellfire. It's the Hellfire. Oh, God, Reyna was right. Reyna was right. Reyna was so right. Oh jeez. I take your men and get the hell out of here. Not until I see Gonzalez. Oh, Daisy versus May. Oh crap. Oh, Daisy versus May. <laughs> the, the apprentice versus the master. Oh. Oh damn. I don't want to hurt you. You won't. Oh. 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 Oh, bust open lip. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh! I'm sorry, May. You're not welcome here. Oh damn! Oh yeah, just yeah, we're going to, yeah using the best at her disposal, the best abilities at her disposal. Ah, oh, this is this is another shield, another shield civil war. Yeah. Good idea. <laughs> you know I am capable of finishing my sentences. No. You knew. Two peas in a pod. Stop with the metaphors. It's not a metaphor. The dawn that protects the rose. The irony. So they're part of the same flower? What's your purpose, my destiny is to help you become what you're supposed to be. Why the hell did I even come here? Okay. Because you want answers, hey? you're just not willing to hear them. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, she's gonna suck the life out of him. Oh. Oh, that's new. That's very new. Okay. So that's... Is that how she stays young? Is that what she's had to do all this time? Oh, she's... Yep, she's a prisoner, all right? She's hands hands bolted to the table. I'll get her to admit what she did to you. What did she do to Kara? Did she beat her up or something? You said that you knowingly handed Agent Kara Palamas over to Hydra. Oh. Oh. She suffered months of torture and mind control. Is this when she was Madame Hydra, when she was you undercover? Kara tells me you don't like needles. Ugh. Ugh. Stay strong, Bobby. Stay strong, Mockingbird. You got this. Oh, under the nails, that's the worst part. Oh, that's the worst place. No, the poor nails. Oh. Now, in a little while, the drug will turn off. Oh, it's gonna Everything come gonna crashing back in. Flood in at once. Ugh. Is there a problem? Any time will tell. What about the alien thing in the cargo hold? Could be what this is all about. Yeah, oh, I forgot about that too. I was so focused to on Bahrain. I forgot about the weapon they have that's killing humans. So yeah. I mean, Bahrain was so long ago, it's more likely to be the weapon. Yeah. Polar bear. I'm curious how you did it. With style. <laughs> I gotta say, I really love Kyle MacLachlan as, um, as Cal. Yeah. I haven't seen him in dramatic stuff before, so seeing him in this is a nice change. What appears to be gorilla testosterone and, no lie, a drop of peppermint. 
Peppermint. It's an ill-conceived attempt at super strength. A single vial would send any normal man to the hospital. Sky's father took three. Jesus. So it's, it's basically a bootleg of the centipede serum. It's a bootleg of the centipede serum. She feels yeah, it. completely unofficial, unlicensed, just a mad scientist concoction. If she understands your pain. I'm helping her heal. Uh, seeing her fingers makes mine feel Take numb. Jesus. I will always stand with Ward. Oh, I'm so sorry, Kara. I'm so sorry for you. Thank you, for you deserve so much better. You deserve someone, but you deserve so much better than Ward. There's only one thing that can save the Inhumans from death and destruction, and it is neither you nor I. It's Sky. Hey, that rhymes. Even in the darkness, they will see the truth. Oh, oh. No. They won't. Oh, she's dead. Oh, she's dead. Oh. Oh, Raina. Oh. Yep, and Daisy saw the whole thing. <laughs> oh yeah, this is unfolding. This is. You were leading them into a war. If they need protection, it is from you. I'm sorry. You feel that way. <laughs> oh crud, jeez. Restrain. Uh. Take her with you. Could I get a glass of that water? <laughs> oh, is he gonna drink the water? Is he gonna drink it? Okay. Yeah, okay, alright, just one panel, I thought so, yeah, just one panel. This is a waste of water, you drink it! Nourish yourself from the inside out! Oh, the pain's coming through, oh, the pain's coming through! Mm, Bobby, tell me you're okay! See, I've seen the real Grant Ward. The one buried deep inside. Okay, He's Bobby. A who always has an excuse or someone else to blame. Bobby, don't He's provoke him. Family. Sure. Don't provoke him. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, jeez! Oh, yes! Bobby Morse! Oh, God, I'm in love. I'm in love. Oh, jeez. Yes! Oh. 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 Boom! There we go. Yeah. Off the pipe. She loves that move. She loves that move. Oh. Oh god, her leg! Oh. Okay, Hunter, May, right now would be great timing. Is there anything you'd like to say to Kara? Oh god, it's gonna be her. Oh. 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 <laughs> seizure. He's having a seizure. Or oh, not. Oh. Oh. Those are some bulky hands. Oh. Oh. You're looking for a monster. This is some Jekyll and Hyde shit. Everybody out. That is some Jekyll and Hyde style stuff. Yeah, those nails, those hands. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's the boost he needed. That is the boost he needed. I'm not hopeful these will do anything but piss him off. You might want that, but a rifle version. Not yeah. Yet. Yeah, take aim and fire. Doesn't do jack. I've always done whatever she asks. It makes me happy. That's not a healthy marriage. That's why she loves me. Yeah, that's really not a healthy marriage. Well, even you. Little present. Oh, a gun. So when they come through that door, they're gonna die. First person through this door. Ah. Oh. Brains everywhere. Oh Jesus. Closure. Oh shit. Oh god, she has to find a way to warn them. She has to find a way to warn them. Yeah, no, Bobby can handle it. Yeah, she broke out of the bolts, even with the things in her fingernails. She broke out. She can handle it. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, this is Nightcrawler. This is Nightcrawler sneaking into the White House from X2 all over again. Yep. Uh, okay. Maybe not so much Nightcrawler, just a light version. Oh, no. Oh, pretty eyes. Oh. Oh, she can duplicate. Oh, she can duplicate. Okay. I'm also upstairs in a conference room. Yeah. She's everywhere. She's everywhere. 
It's pretty badass, I'm not gonna lie. It's kinda badass. <laughs> oh, he's got full body armor and everything. He's prepared, not just an axe. Yeah, he's prepared. Oh, no, 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 no. He runs like a human gorilla. Yeah, got that gorilla testosterone up and running. He runs like an animal. Oh, oh. Okay, that was good. Oh, he's pinned, isn't he? He's pinned. But he can move the car. With his strength, he could probably move the car. Now it's just you and me. And we're gonna talk. Okay, not. Then he's very securely pinned by the car. Now what? Now. We begin. They begin? Begin what? Oh, are they gonna start transforming people or start killing? Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, all right. That wasn't as I'll admit that one. It had it had loose ends. It had obvious cliffhangers. It didn't it didn't have like surprise twists or anything. It didn't have any surprise like had twists. Didn't have any surprise endings. You know, like stuff that we know has to be. You know, it is definitely going to be resolved in the next episode. Those kinds of endings. Um, but yeah, okay. End of the episode. So, Shield versus the Inhumans. Shield versus the Inhumans. That is a story I never, being introduced to the Inhumans in this, I think I I, I never would have like um, anticipated that coming. And I think my kind of not my trouble, but my kind of experience watching the show as like not being a very like fluent comic reader. Like I I've read very very few comics. Most of the comics I've read have been in preparation for when the movies come out, and very few like more like. Um, like what's the word like more like um obscure stories or anything like that like, like the the solo stories like the, the the other heroes and stuff like like i've read very few of those comics in humans never so much just no never so much as touched those comics never known what they were about um so yeah so my knowledge of the inhumans is i think it's partly to marvel ultimate lines they were in that game they were in marvel ultimate lines just a little bit um and i knew <coughs> i knew about the tv show i knew about the tv show and i think um, I watched the trailer for it the other day again. I, I was curious about it. And I went back to watch the trailer, and they actually mentioned they mentioned Terragenesis on Earth. They mentioned that and stuff. So, yeah, looking back, I mean, again, it, it's like a half decent trailer. The show itself is said to be, you know, not the worst possible thing to come out of Marvel TV, but it's not exactly the best either. So, yeah, uh, but yeah, but she was like with this one. I think it's a very, very, it's it, it, it's a very, very kind of, um, you know, like a. I don't know how to describe it. It's, 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 it's story, it feels like that kind of story with the clairvoyant. The clairvoyant was very much a Shield solo story. Like Shield, like like the clairvoyant thing. It happened after we were introduced to a lot of the main characters, and they had their own stories. And those stories happened in accordance with whatever was going on around them. And some of it tied into like Avengers stuff, like the Thor battle and them cleaning that up, and the Winter Soldier and stuff. That one, obviously, the Winter Soldier one had a much much bigger impact on the on the show. Um, but then the clairvoyant thing was its own thing leading up to. The Winter Soldier. That one had that. That one was sh like a like a a plot line of of um, Shield's own making that also tied in, that tied very very neatly into into in, in, into uh, the Winter Soldier events and showed just how you know bad things could be. So with the Inhumans again, these are people that again the movies are unlikely to um, are unlikely unlikely to explore. And it's even more ironic that you say that, that, that I say that because originally the Inhumans, like to my knowledge originally the Inhumans were meant to be a movie it was, there was meant to be a movie for Inhumans but then I don't know what the decision making process on that was they changed their minds they you know dialed it down to a tv show and then the tv show was was poorly commercially received it was poorly commercially received um so yeah so with this with, 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 with the Inhumans I think it helps that the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. alone is such a great show um so they can actually do stories and characters like that and still bring some life and light into them in, in in various different ways. So, so yeah, so the Inhumans. I mean, we, 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 the, the, there is an Inhuman family. There's Black Bolt. There's Medusa. There's Lockjaw. That teleporting dog. Um, there's a bunch of other characters. So the, 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 there are the, 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 there are the, there's like an official like um like a Fantastic Four version almost of um of Inhumans. So that is where the Inhumans show the the show comes from. But with this one, it's it's um it's Inhumans. It's maybe lesser known Inhumans. Maybe just your average everyday Inhumans. Who are also now on the brink of war against Shield, so yeah. But this episode, we uh, we had Daisy versus May. 
Daisy versus May. That is a fight I never would have thought I wanted to see. I think once it happened, I was like, wait, no, you guys, you guys are family. You guys, you know, like, 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 like it was like, 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 like the apprentice versus the master. That fight had apprentice versus master written all over it. The choreography was so well done, you know. Um, Ming Na and Chloe just handled it beautifully. Like, the dialogue in, in the middle of the fight, like, you know, you don't want to do this, trust me. Um, as well as for the actual fight stuff, showing that you know May May taught her everything. May taught her everything um, about fighting. So it's like you know it's, it's 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 very much it's very much a case. Like especially when she actually she manages to knock her. I mean she. I mean Daisy fought back. Like Daisy knew she she couldn't. Like I think Daisy eventually realized she couldn't be it because again like that that scene was very much like you know oh I taught you everything you know not everything I know like like it was that kind of thing with Nola because you know May is capable of killing. Um, especially physically, so she didn't really teach Daisy to do that stuff, I don't think, but actually, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat, she did teach her the basics, helped her improve on that stuff, so, you know, Daisy became a hell of a fighter, but she still couldn't beat May, so once once she realised that, she actually did resort to using her, her quake powers and stuff, so, yeah, um, so that was cool, but yeah, Daisy versus May, that is a, oh, it's a fight I never thought I'd actually, I I, I, can't, I feel guilty for enjoying it, I don't, I don't know if I'm supposed to enjoy that or not, like, you know, it's May, it, because of the characters, because of it, because it's May and Daisy, like they're fan favorite characters. They love each other. They're family. Again, they're a team, and they're, 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 it's, it's like a mini civil war between them. Um, and even even theoretically too, like with this whole Shield versus Inhumans thing, it's like a whole other civil war. Like you know, like you know, Daisy doesn't believe that Shield would ever do this, or that her mother would ever do this, but she's caught in the crossfire very much in that kind of a way. So. Yeah, so Daisy vs. May, that happened, and Raina's visions came true. In this episode, Raina's visions came true, S.H.I.E.L.D. came, everything went to hell. Um, you know, the Inhumans, Gordon and one of his other buddies actually, you know, stole a Quinjet, and then his buddy actually started raining hellfire down on them. So it was, it was a S.H.I.E.L.D. Quinjet that did it, not specifically S.H.I.E.L.D. themselves. So, so yeah, so that is actually the other thing about this episode. We, we, like, we, we discover that, um, give me a second, I'm just going to turn my fan on, because it's boiling in here. Um... The the other thing we discover is that Jiaying is not so perfect. She's not so innocent. She's not so true. She's she has the power to suck the life out of people. Like that one, the, that that shield agent that you know, the, the, that shield agent that Gordon kidnapped from the from the Quinjet. I thought he was gonna do like a brutal kill, like you know, just teleporting him into the middle of the sky and then letting him drop down. I thought we were gonna see that kind of a shot, but no, he actually took a to, he did. They were he was gonna kill him anyway. He was gonna kill him anyway. He handed over to Jiaying. So Jiaying has the power to heal herself using other people's life force, like she literally sucks the life out of them, so yeah, so that, I think that that kind of brings into question what her, what her power really is, and I think I think it would, it would definitely make more sense if that's like an actual causality of her resurrection, like because she died, she fully fully died, she was butchered, she was you know, like her blood and her organs and everything was taken from her by Whitehall, so she lost a lot of what made her, of what gave her her powers originally, so being put back together was not an easy task for Cow himself, Cow even said you know, her, 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 her power was what really actually you know, allowed her to heal herself, but then that also raises the question of, you know, what else did they do? Well, like, you know, obviously, obviously he wouldn't mention that kind of stuff, Daisy, like, if, if she really, like, if, if he really did find people and hand them over to her on a platter, and then watch as she sucked the life out of them, obviously, Cal would not mention that to Daisy, he would not mention that kind of stuff, that would raise a lot more questions. Um, so yes, yeah, so I think it, I think it would make more sense. It's, it's actually a causality of her death. So, like her her death, the loss of the family, the loss of Daisy changed them both. Like she turned into someone who literally couldn't heal or you know retain her her gift or her, her age, unless she actually you took someone else's life in order to preserve it. And Cal went all Jekyll and Hyde. Cal went fully Jekyll and Hyde in this episode. So. Yeah, but and even back then, he he said you know he 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 couldn't protect Daisy or his wife um with any with any of his regular strength, so he had to experiment on himself. He had to try and give himself inhuman, um inhuman stuff. So he put together a concoction of various stuff. Like and I think the the stuff I remember is like um the one thing I remember is gorilla testosterone, gorilla testosterone. And you know towards the end when he actually transformed, you could actually see that you know he was actually hobbling along the corridor, going after um going after thingy um fits and simmons so you, you could never tell there was like an animalistic kind of quality to him after that but you're seeing him jumping back from the bed like that like his hands his hands were the first sign like his hands his knuckles looked bulkier his nails were outgrown and then i thought oh crap are we gonna see like a different face and then his face looks bulky like he's just on like a shit ton of botox um 
and yeah so that stuff definitely changed um but um but yeah that's the thing so Jaying is evil Jaying has very very like a evilly polluted kind of history and now even now a polluted mindset um she killed Reyna Reyna that feels like a really really piss poor way to end Reyna like Reyna is such an influential character in this series and she's she's such a you know she's 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 such a strong minor kind of like a like a like a like a strong side role so seeing her killed off just like that just as like a threat to Jaying it makes sense but at the same time it's like you know, I'd, 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 like it, it feels weird to see her go off just like that, like just like that. She stabs her in the neck. I thought, oh, I thought, you know, it could be like a, like a trank injection or something, like a, her, her knocking Raina out and then having someone else knock Daisy out with like a pipe. So I don't know. It just felt weird. It just felt weird. So I'm hoping that's not the end of Raina. I'm, I'm hoping that's not the end, the, the, the last we see of Raina. But <sighs> I guess we'll see. I guess we shall see in the end what the truth is. Um, but yeah, that is that is that. But Raina even said, like, and especially because of what Raina said, like, it was her destiny to help Daisy become who she really is. Like, I mean, you would have thought that ended with her be becoming inhuman and becoming Daisy Johnson. But I think you know she still hasn't reclaimed that name. She's like no one, no one but her parents are using that name for her. Like, even not even Lincoln's using that name for her. So you know, maybe that is it's like that kind of stuff as well. Is why I think on the one hand I'm annoyed that they killed Raina, but on the other hand I don't I, I don't think she's actually dead. I don't think she's actually dead. If if that really is her role to actually help Daisy become Daisy Johnson and to become whoever. Um, then I feel like th for that one they'll probably be bring Raina back somehow, just somehow. If they can resurrect all these other people, they can definitely resurrect Raina. So, yeah, but who's going to do the job of resurrecting Raina? I don't know. But, yeah, she also she also kept her grandmother's words at heart. She kept those words at heart. And you know, her grandmother used to describe her as like an angel, as an angel. So I said that was biblically true in the middle of the reaction. I said that was biblically true, and that's because I have read somewhere... Not in the Bible specifically. It was like, it was like a like an extract from the Bible. But I read somewhere that you know angels typically are not. They're not like they're they're not meant to be seen by the human eye or by the naked eye. Like they are typically kind of grotesque and hideous figures. But it's the fact you know like them being angels is because deep down they're still actually good. They're actually they actually want to do good. But on the outside, it's just like a way of like you know seeing how people react to angels and seeing how people actually you know, react to that kind of thing, like, you see a grotesque, hideous, monstrous-looking figure, you would be repulsed and think, oh, that thing's here to hurt me or harm me, but then deep down, they're actually there to help you and then, and, and, um, dinging you. So, yeah, I think, I don't know, I can't remember where I read it. It was in the comment section of a YouTube video sometimes. So it's all probably, biblically speaking, probably not the most legitimate source, but still, it was like, the, 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 there was an extract along with it, like, an actual Bible verse extract along with it. So if you guys are aware of that in any way, then feel free to, you know, like, actually correct me if I got it wrong or, you know, you know, say say what the actual truth is, but yeah, so that's the truth behind angels, and like with Raina, that's that's the thing too. Like she, like her visions actually have actually come true. Her visions have come true so far. We saw in this episode, all of them have come true. The one vision we still haven't seen, I think we're probably not going to see that, is the one about the kid going through the transition and glowing blue and all that, so all that crap. So, but yeah, but other other than that, like her visions have come true, and she she's now accepted her new place in the inhuman life and in the inhuman reality is it, to actually not to lead but to illuminate like you said to actually show them the path that they can take and that they probably should take but yeah so that conversation was going so good up until Raina said that it was her mission to stop Jiang too. Jiang was actually considering having Raina on as an advisor um, to show her what other disasters would come and stuff so but I think what Raina didn't see or didn't know or just didn't tell was that Jiang would influence that disaster yeah had she not killed Gonzalez and declared war then yeah and yeah and it was it was her side that perpetrated it was her side that perpetrated like you know it was the inhumans actually stole the quinjet and started raining fire so you know i wonder if reina actually started i think she might have done because then she otherwise she wouldn't have actually confronted jaying in that way being like you know you're the real evil here and i'm gonna stop you um so yeah so reina's dead and jaying jaying has infiltrated the iliad she's infiltrated the iliad and she's Getting ready to unleash more of those crystals. They have a lot more of those crystals. Like they said, that they had the five diviners and they melted them all down and regrew them into their own little crystals infused with the diviner metal that actually kills non-inhumans. Um, so I don't know if it's going to be a case of like that she's going to test it on the various prisoners they have or just use it to execute them or something. But I don't know. She, she said now we begin. So I think I don't know if she actually does hope or know that there, there are some secret like un, like you know unknowing in humans on the on, on the Iliad um, 
But yeah, she's keeping Daisy prisoner there too, and Max going to rescue her. Max saw them carrying her away, so he's going to rescue her. And you know, he was all cladded up in body armor and everything with his, with his axe, so he's going to get back into the violence just to save Daisy. So yeah, just when he thought he was about to leave, he just gets pulled right back into the firefight. So yeah, fun stuff, fun stuff. And I was wondering too, what this what this was all really about like if it was really just revenge or if it was like an actual vengeance mission of some sort because I'm thinking when I first thought of revenge I thought okay it must be for Bahrain because you know May killed two inhumans um so it must be because of that but then you know that that would be like a revenge plan years in the planning and it would make sense then why you know we, why we didn't immediately see in it like a like an evil side to Jai Ying like like the first we saw of Jai Ying she was being murdered by Whitehall so you can't really help but feel sympathy or empathy for her so you know, um, that kind of thing made sense, and then afterwards, like the 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 more stuff that unfolds, and then but by by the the pre by the last episode, you actually see that oh, she actually has some more nefarious stuff up her plans. Like she kills she kills Gonzalez, stages like an attack, and then declares war on Shield. So she actually has other plans up her sleeve. Um, and then I thought, you know, oh, they actually have an inhuman killing weapon. That's why they're on the Iliad. That's why they're on the Iliad, because the Iliad actually has the weapon capable of killing inhumans. And what that weapon is, I'm still waiting to find out. Like, it, it's a stone with the stuff carved into it, like Gordon said, but it can also turn into sludge. It can also turn into sludge. It has solid, um, it has, like, solid or, um, or, like, liquid states of matter. So we don't know what it's, you know, what it's actually capable of, like, what, like how it works or anything. But yeah, I think I remember first seeing it, and it turned into the sludge. I was instantly reminded of the gravitonium. But then we we know that still that still exists. I think that's probably in the hands of Ian Quinn, who we haven't seen for a long time, and I'm glad because he's a dick and I hate him. Um, but yeah, so I think it reminded me of the gravitonium. But no, the gravitonium looks very much different, and it's not a sludge. It's actually a hovering. It's a hovering sludge. It's a hovering sludge, like 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 like, like the ether. But um. But, you know, the this this thing, the, the the stone, whatever it is, that's capable. So I think that's why they're on the Iliad, and that's why they want revenge. So they want they want that back. They're very much aware of it. Um, so yeah, we'll see stuff like that very soon. And Bobby, we had Bobby, we had Bobster. Um, she was being held captive by Bobby and Kara. So yeah, so Bobby handed Kara over to Hydra. Um, whilst she was undercover, whilst she was actually undercover at Hydra, and yeah, I think yeah, so like yeah, so she was the one who raided. She she she, she um um exposed her safe house. She exposed the safe house, and you know like left left um left Kara for dead, and then Kara was handed over to Whitehall personally for personal brainwashing, and then yeah, so that like that was what that story was about. Then so Kara wanted closure. She she, she wanted an apology, which Bobby right. I think I'm not victim blaming here i'm not doing that i i think you know i think it would have helped i mean yeah because i think the thing with kara is that she was a shield agent she was an actual shield agent and she was brainwashed and then even after getting her mind back things just still aren't right for her and i think it's definitely because of ward a hundred like um like, like at least 90 percent 90 percent of that blame is on ward ward has taken advantage of her having lost her life and stuff, you know, he's you know he, the same thing happened to him, so he feels like you know he can probably pay the, the favor back through Garrett because he still, you know, he still knows what Garrett did for him as well as to him, so I think he he, he he thinks he can pay that favor back. Um, but yeah, but Kara, it's like you know, I, I I I don't understand why Bobby couldn't see things from her point of view and actually still maybe apologize to her, but not to Ward. Tell Ward to go eat shit in hell, but you know, to Kara at least, still apologize to her. And you know, like instead, she's she just giving justifications. Instead, being like, you know, oh, you know, I'm not gonna say sorry, but I'm gonna, you know, tell you why I did what I did. I couldn't blow my cover. I couldn't do this or that or the other. So, you know, I had all of those issues um, as well. So I don't, I don't know why she just couldn't just, you know, do it to, to like apologize to, to Kara, you know, at, at the very least. But she didn't. And then, um, yeah. So then they had a fight. I think you know she she broke out of those bolts very very quickly and very easily. I was I was amazed to see that fight scene. I was amazed to see that fight scene. She actually you know broke out the bolts and then bashed his thing on the head and on the door. And she stood her own. She stood her ground, especially for having stuff shoved under her nails. I think that is that is yeah. And I think that that kind of pain can only be imaginable. Can only be imaginable, especially the the the. the the nails under that that's like such weak flesh you actually have to tear through it and put it through that's just just a horrible thing to try and envision like like looking at her fingers made mine feel numb and looking at her fingers i think it's, it's that thing where you see someone at, like it's 
kind of like that thing where you see someone else in pain if you see someone else being stabbed or shot or something you kind of imagine it happening to you two in the same place i think with her looking at her fingers just made mine feel numb like i didn't even write properly for like two four minutes so yeah but um and even worse he made it with the the, the delayed anesthetic thing so like 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 the anesthetic start off so she wouldn't feel it going in but then after a while she'd actually feel it all flooding back in just like with Kara, like you know all of that mental pain just comes rushing back in as she as she remembers that everything that they did to her so yeah but bobby stood her own she fought back she kicked him through the window and through the door and everything so she um she stood her ground she stood her ground and stuff but now they've set up the perfect trap for may and for the hunter where the gun is laser tagged onto the door so when when it opens up they'll actually so they actually get shot and stuff so she has to find a way to get out of the chair and warn them ahead of time so i think i, I don't think the gun will i think it's it's tagged to movement i think i don't know because i think he there's no clear laser line that you can see but he did press the thing on the door so i think it's so i think there's one on the door and there's one on the hinge so if that moves if that moves and it registers that moving then that will mean that the lock is broken then the gun will not to fire so i don't think her moving in front of the gun per se will actually trigger anything at all or at least i hope it doesn't so as long as you can find a way out of the chair or just like kind of hobble over to the phone and warn them ahead of time she can get the gag out of her mouth too then yeah, but I mean, hey, she she got out of bolts. She got out of hard bolts from the desk, even with stuff in her nails. So she she can get out of anything. She can get out of anything. But yeah, that's all the stuff that went down in this episode. So Jaying, yeah, Jaying Cow Cow. So seeing him go full Jekyll and Hyde was interesting. That was something else. Just seeing him finally getting the boost he needed from Simmons. That injecting was the boost he needed, and then that kind of brought out his full muscular form and stuff. So seeing that was strange. So now he's securely pinned between the wall and the car and stuff so now Cal, um, Phil can actually talk to him so yeah this 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 episode definitely took the cake this took the cake so as as, as part ones go this was a very very enjoyable part one it's, 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 it's one of those part ones I'm actually less annoyed with and I was like you know I know you know I, I want to see stuff but it's like you know I can definitely still wait until I get to the next episode and stuff so yeah it's very very fun it's very very fun so We'll see where stuff progresses from here, but that was SOS part of episode 20, 21, SOS part 1, the uh, season 2 of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so yeah, that is pretty much all I have from this one, so that was, yeah, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., episode 21, SOS part 1, um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video, if you guys enjoyed it, then salt and burn that like button, uh, comment on what you thought on what you thought of the episode and how you think the season's going to end, what you hope to see um, in the next, in, in the finale and stuff. Um, for, you know, if, if you want the uncut reaction too, then that will be up on Patreon. Uh, so go check that out. And yeah, that is it. So I will see you guys next time.